This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Inc. so far we brought you the story of families, of businesses built on the enterprise and talent of one man. This week we bring you the story of an unusual family and an extraordinary company, the story of Infosys. Out here where I stand on this busy, crowded, noisy road is the old India with its socialist infrastructure, with things that seem broken down and of the past. But as I walk through that gate over there, you're going to see that I enter what is almost another stratosphere. So you were working or a student in Pune? I was working in Pune. You were working in Pune when you met uh, Mr. Murthy. Mr. Murthy. How mm. did you meet him? <laughs> Mr. Murthy was a consultant to a small company known as System Research Institute. And we had a common friend. And that friend told me once, I was working with Telco Tata's and he told that uh, here is Mr. Narayan Murthy, he had just come from Paris. He's a very well-read person and he also speaks the same language, Kannada, which is my mother tongue. Uh, that's the way all of us met. And then how long did it take before you decided you wanted to marry him? Uh -huh, it, uh, I met him in 74, we married in 78. And yeah. your parents didn't approve, your father didn't no, because, approve? No, the reason was Mr. Murthy did not have a job. In between he left his job, he was without job for a long time. Then he was on his own for some time. And my father, I'm sure anybody's father will feel in the same way, like, he should have a... He said, the boy is very good, but he should get a job, then he should marry. <laughs> and you, for the longest time, you used to even pay for your meals <laughs> in restaurants and cinema. Yeah, yeah. Of course, at that time in India, when they started, the situation was simply not, um, not encouraging for anybody to do that well. As you know, all the things that happened later, uh, made it possible. It was like being in the right place at the right time. But I don't know if you can bring those old ideas again together. Nandan, I want to begin at the beginning. It's been 25 years. That's right. And in the beginning, when it started, it started by accident in a way that you, you joined Patni and met Narayan Murthy. Would you call it an accident? Oh, I would call it uh, serendipity. I mean, joining Patni was certainly serendipity because when I came out of IIT, I really was at a loose end and didn't know whether to take up a job or go into an MBA or go abroad. And I was generally waffling around. And I walked into this room and I met this man who, who was very impressed when I met him because he was very, very sharp. And uh, luckily for me, he decided to hire people based on their raw talent. So he gave me a few puzzles. And I, apparently I got the answers right. And then he hired me to join party. And that's how this whole thing began. You know, what happened was when we founded it, all my, the, the other six colleagues of mine, the six other founders, they were in the US because we had no infrastructure here. Those days, the friction to business was very, very high. Uh, so I was the only person who stayed back in India. And then my job was to first get a license to import a computer. My job was to make sure that every month we could send money to my colleagues from here. Uh, I would go and wait in the corridors of Reserve Bank of India. I waited for two years to get a telephone line, all of that. And in that period, you know, my wife was a big source of uh, support. And uh, it was good. It was, uh, it was exciting because we had a, a great vision, you know, it was wonderful. How could somebody without any money start a company? What is that self-confidence? I think once you have a vision, 
which is larger than a group of people which is going to make a difference to the context once you have a vision which is bought by every member of the team a vision that tells people that they too can catch a part of the rainbow and put it in their pocket then people are willing to make the sacrifices that are needed and the biggest challenge is to get a great vision the biggest challenge is to get a great team and and to have an enduring value system when the boom came and suddenly you were all millionaires and billionaires uh -huh. how did you feel then actually i at times i feel i lost a beautiful life why because i always believed in a middle class way of living common thing enjoying small things um uh, like going for a movie always brings me a lot of enthusiasm walking on the commercial street makes gets me a lot of kick um there are so many things where i would like to save and buy it give me enormous happiness you know i remember i saved 1700 rupees and bought pair of bangles to my daughter who was 2 years old it, and i used to look forward to that day okay i had to go and buy the bangles uh, so many things you lose with money so many things you gain with money also for example the philanthropy the kind of philanthropy we do today it's only because of money i would not have been able to do if i would have remained in the middle class The annals of Infosys record that it was on a January morning in 1981 that this revolutionary new company was born. To translate his vision into reality, Narayan Murthy persuaded six of his colleagues to leave safe jobs in a Mumbai computer company and take a chance with him. In Bombay, we were all working together at uh, Patni Computers under the leadership of Mr. Murthy, and at that time, when this idea of forming a company of our own came up i was more than happy to join the other six and i am more than happy uh for the simple reason you can build a dream that you were thinking that you could do and uh, creating a professional organization professional organization which is uh, world class that is the dream that we had the risk was very different for somebody like me and somebody like mr murthy because he was already established in the industry um getting um, you know pretty good amount of uh, money and salary in a good position where i was up you know young and upcoming in one way or other so the risk for me were definitely lower than him but definitely there was a risk involved because we were i was in a permanent job settling down in a place this required a lot of movement instability instability for a period of time so there were risks involved but the comparatively much lower for somebody like me Amurthy said that you know I'm going to do this will you be you know will you join In my case um, the answer was immediate yes Why uh, see there are two reasons one I was very comfortable with working with Murthy two from a personal side I was very young at 25 years old so the risk was not very high you know uh, if it didn't work I can always go and join somebody else so Uh, you know you didn't really think that much the enormity of the risk they took becomes clearer if you remember that india had a closed economy in those days and things like computers and telephones were considered luxuries infosys survived by sending its founding members to take up assignments in the united states while narayan murthy stayed in india holding the fort and trying to get his dream company off the ground the key thing was we never looked at the indian market as our market and that was the difference i think if we had focused just on the indian market we would have been far more distressed but at the end of the day we were looking at the global market india was a base we were going to use the indian talent and solve these global problems how many computers did you need to get started oh what happened in the beginning was uh, we didn't have money and we couldn't import computers So Murthy stayed back and held the fort here and the rest of us went to the US and actually worked there on projects and we earned money and we put that money back into the firm so it was bootstrapping from our own sweat our desire was to create a large number of jobs with high disposable income but to do that we needed uh computers to be imported to india 
we needed data communication facilities, we needed easy travel abroad, we needed to open offices abroad. None of these things existed. None of these things existed then. Uh, you know, it was only in 1991 when Dr. Manmohan Singh reformed the economy, of course under the uh, patronage of uh, Mr. Narasimha Rao, all these things became possible. Till then, it, you know, for example, uh, it took us two years to import a computer. I had to make 25 trips to Delhi to get license to import a computer. It took us a couple of years to get a telephone line in Bangalore. There were no data communication lines there. It, you know, it, it would take us about 10 days to, op to get approval from the Reserve Bank of India to travel abroad. We couldn't open offices, we couldn't hire consultants. So there was tremendous friction to business up to 1991. I always say that if there's one shining example of all the good that came out of liberalization, it is emphasis. We have about 400 plus customers today and some of the big ones are like Goldman Sachs or Nordstrom, uh, Aetna or um, Airbus for example is one of our customers.